We start with a point. Hi, it's Rob Bryanton, and welcome back to the Imagining the Tenth Dimension video blog. Now, the video we're looking at here comes from YouTube. We're going to be talking about uh, who this is that uh, we're looking at in a minute. But today's entry is called Astrotometry. In The Shaman, we talked about the definition of shamanism found in Wikipedia. Shamanism is based on the premise that the visible world is pervaded by invisible forces or spirits which affect the lives of the living. We also talked about visionaries like Terence McKenna, who some have called a modern shaman. In the follow-up to that entry, we talked about other people I would call modern shamans, Alex Gray and Grant Morrison. This time around, I'd like to talk about a fascinating fellow who we might call a techno-shaman, John Thomas Bryant. A techno-shaman, we could say, is someone who embraces the shamanic principles of there being hidden forces and patterns that come from outside of our perceived reality, but who embraces modern technology as one of the means to study and reveal those hidden connections. John sees technology not only as a conduit for consciousness, but as a new life form evolving with us inside. Einstein realized that in order for photons to entangle through the cosmos, gravity must somehow cooperate with the movement of light. Einstein resolved the spooky action at a distance of quantum mechanics with something he called teleparallel gravitation. Now, Bryant has observed coincidences of solar activity and planetary movements he believes validates Einstein's hypothesis that the universe has an inherent time-space symmetry. The great minds of the 20th century, Einstein, Feynman, Wheeler, Hawking, all kept trying to get us to visualize time as being something that exists out there simultaneously, in the same way that space exists out there and all around us. Now, Bryant is working on a brand new system which shows a deeper understanding of these ideas. He's proposing that time folds over multiple axes and believes the mysteries of the photon can be sorted out by treating it as an indicator of where space-time folds. He calls his vision of a manifold of space-time the astrotome. His system of understanding that tome, that large book containing all possible expressions of mass and energy, is called astrotometry. John is providing some tantalizing glimpses into the possibilities of what it means if the Sun is actually our primary time axis, as John refers to it. Could solar features be entwined with events that are approaching us in time here on Earth, like earthquakes, hurricanes, or volcanoes? If everything and every time exists simultaneously, then reverse time causality and resonances and nodes that connect the future, the present, and the past together are easier to visualize. And as I reported not long ago in Google and the group Mind, this idea has been confirmed by scientists in the lab. There really are experiments that have been conducted now which prove that the future leaks back into the present. I'd like to quote from John Thomas Bryant here because he's able to describe his work much better than I. In the three-dimensional version of astrotometry, the observed movement of the photon is understood to be a sort of illusion. Astrotomity models matter and energy as node patterns in standing waveforms. The node patterns rematerialize from moment to moment in a conservative 3D space where nothing may move without simultaneously affecting and being affected by everything else. The node patterns are created by common carrier waves which ebb and flow from six orthogonal directions. In a seventh movement, the resulting node pattern creates feedback in its carrier as the waves interfere and curl. From the interference patterns, the process starts all over. The space where the node pattern reforms seems the same from the pattern's supersimilar perspective. Since time relative changes in the pattern is the only indication of movement, the relative movement between its moments must be indirectly observed. Astrotometry provides the physics for Aristotle's concept of the unmoved mover. The node pattern isn't actually moving. Matter and energy are being translated through space by the underlying mechanisms of time, which fold through as a part of all physical structures. What is theorized to be moving is not the photon, but the underlying carrier waves. This is why there is a particle wave duality. Matter materializes, 
and rematerializes in every moment from underlying waveforms that carry it through space. This mechanism provides an explanation for relativistic time and movement. In astrotometry, this space between moments is sorted out by observing supersymmetric movements in the cosmos. You are to be forgiven if you found the above mind-boggling. I do as well. With John's work, I often feel like I'm watching an icy tip sticking out of the water and I don't really have a clear vision of the giant form that's lurking in the depths below, even though I keep catching glimpses. Nonetheless, I see a lot of connections between his groundbreaking scientific theories and the ideas I've been playing with in my project, in that he's not afraid of embracing the philosophical, metaphysical, spiritual aspects of imagining connections that transcend space and time. John has generously created a large volume of work on YouTube as he works through this huge cloud of ideas. And he has three different channels you should check out. You can find them at youtube.com slash astrotometry slash kasabio and slash patterns and chaos. Now I'd like to uh, finish here with, uh, I'm going to provide you some button links to some of my favorite movies John has posted. But there are many more to choose from, as I'm sure you'll find out when you go to the above channel links. First of all, The Moon Illusion. I believe this is the first video of John's I ever saw. If you've never heard of The Moon Illusion, you'll be in for a surprise. After I started showing this video around to people, my brother-in-law, Russell, told me that this is one of the things scout leaders will show their troops while out on overnight camping trips. And the way to make The Moon Illusion go away is to bend over and look at it upside down through your legs. The next video is Visualizing Astrotometry, which gets into John's underlying theory more specifically, a useful introduction. Then on quake predictions, John's theories have allowed him to make some very interesting connections between earthquakes and solar flares. This is where we start to understand just how huge the concepts he's playing with really are. Then on the use of electrical technology is the next one. It's one of my favorite movies of John's. I love the physical journey he takes us on. Well also exploring his unusual ideas. Then uh, next is a link to the video that we've been looking at as the background here. It's called Part 1, October 14th, Sunspot 1005. With this video, John shows us some of the more ancient mystical connections he sees to his work. This is another of his most far-reaching and challenging videos. I love it. I would invite you to go check out John's website, www.astrotometry.com for more in-depth introduction to his work. Also, please note that John wants us to use his website as the central reference for the latest thinking about astrotometry. As for him, this is all very much a work in progress. In the last video above, John poses this question. What's the difference between a shaman and a sorcerer? The shaman uses his knowledge to benefit the community, and the sorcerer uses his knowledge to benefit himself. In that sense, John is a shaman. His goals are all about finding ways to understand the world and to heal it with a deeper understanding of the mechanisms that create the reality we're all a part of. For me, that shamanistic drive is one of the things I find most interesting about John's work, and I wish him every success in getting his unusual scientific studies out into the world. Now next time we're going to talk about an entry called You Have a Shape and a Trajectory. From Imagining the Tenth Dimension video blog, my name's Rob Bryanton. Enjoy the journey.